In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I will begin this day. I thank you, Lord, for having preserved me during the night. I will do my best to make all I do today pleasing to you, in accordance with your will. My dear Mother Mary, watch over me this day. My guardian angel, take care of me. Saint Joseph and all you saints of God, pray for me. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. This is Reggie Bundang from Don Bosco Press Incorporated. Welcome to Salashana Books Chalk Talk Online. Salashana Books Chalk Talk Online is an online teacher training program that Don Bosco, Don Bosco Press provides its partner schools. Chalk Talk Online in partnership with the Psychological Association Association of the Philippines presents to you today the fourth and last episode of our Mental Health in School series with the topic Mental Health Program During Pandemic and Beyond. This is going to be another productive and informative morning for all of us, so let us now start. To formally welcome you all and to introduce our speaker for today, may I call in the Executive Director of Don Bosco Press Incorporated, Brother Carmelo Martinez. Solutions of Don Bosco. Thank you, Ma'am Reg. Yeah, good morning to all our participants in this Chalk Talk online series brought to you by Don Bosco Press Incorporated in partnership with the Psychological Association of the Philippines. It is another beautiful Friday morning. It is the first Friday of September, and we are happy to be with you today for this another enriching session. To start with, may I just ask you this question as we have, as it has been our practice. How are you feeling today? So, before we start the session, we just ask ourselves, how are we today? Let us just be conscious of our feelings. Okay, thank you for responding to our first poll this morning. Okay. 44%, 46% of our participants describe themselves as happy. Around 16% are in the excited feeling. Around 11 and yeah, 11% 11 are feeling, of our participants are feeling anxious also. There is a small percentage of those who feel sad. It's okay to be sad, it's okay to be anxious. We are happy that you're aware and that you are accepting your feeling. Around 17% of our participants this morning are also motivated and around 8% of us here gathered this morning are feeling inspired. Thank you for answering our first poll. We are now on our last installment of the series on promoting mental health and wellness in the new normal. And we are here again for another interesting discussion with our topic that focuses on the mental health program during pandemic and beyond. Now that many of our school partners have started their classes and have gone through the initial stages of remote teaching and learning, 
it now becomes evident how difficult and draining online classes could sometimes be. Not to mention the other stressors that both teachers and students encounter from day to day. And so it becomes necessary that as we prepare for our lessons and the technology that should accompany them, we should also take time to see how we can provide support for the well-being of all our stakeholders, especially at this time of pandemic. We are grateful to the Psychological Association of the Philippines for partnering with us and for helping us provide you with concrete, practical, and relevant inputs on this issue of mental health in our schools. We thank you too, our dear participants, for your active participation and involvement during our every discussion. We are all learning a lot from the input, but also from the questions that you are raising. We are glad to know that this series has become very useful for all of you and for your school community. May I again ask you another question? Just to see how many of the previous sessions have you joined? So have you participated in our previous Chalk Talk online sessions on mental health? A, for those who have uh, joined in all the previous sessions, B, three out of four, C, two out of four, D, one out of four, and E, if you are joining for the first time. Okay, welcome back to those who have been with us in our previous sessions. And yeah, a good number. So far around 27%. Yeah, one fourth of our participants this morning are joining us for the first time. So welcome to our new timers and welcome back to our previous participants, to those who have already been with us in our previous sessions. Okay. Thank you for answering that poll. In case you have missed the previous sessions of this series, we have already uploaded them in our YouTube channel. Just type Don Bosco Press and look for the for this Chalk Talk online on mental health. And please feel free to use, share, or even download these videos. We will be very happy to know that you find them useful. Muli, maraming maraming salamat po. Daghang salamat kaninyong tanan and may God bless us all. It is also my honor to introduce to you our speaker this morning, Dr. Emmanuel, Emmanuel B. Ernani. He actually opened this series, I think two months ago, last week of July, and we are very happy that he is also concluding it with his input this morning. Though we truly wish that we would still have many opportunities for collaboration with him and with the Psychological Association of the Philippines in the future. Dr. Tata, as he is fondly called, is a clinical and counseling psychologist. He is a consultant and practitioner as well as an educator and researcher. He completed his master's degree in psychology from the University of San Carlos in Cebu City and his doctorate major in clinical psychology from Siliman University. He has been a faculty member of the University of San Carlos Psychology Department and the Cebu Institute of Technology University. Currently, he is the chair of Cebu Normal University's Research Ethics Committee. He has also served CNU in various capacities in the past, among them as chair of the Psychology Department, chair of the Social Science Department, dean of Student Affairs, and as university counselor. Dr. Tata is also involved in consultancy and is currently connected as consultant and trainer to Legal Alternative for Women Center Incorporated, also to the Metropolitan Matrimonial Tribunal of the Catholic Church and the Cebu City Police Office Wellness Center, among others. He is also the Executive Director of Psychosomatherapy Clinic Center for Wellbeing, his other trainings and expertise includes his being a certified anger management facilitator by the Anderson and Anderson Consulting USA and as career service executive certified trainer for public service ethics. 
Dr. Tata will be joined by Ms. Juliet Consista during the Q&A later. She'll be our moderator today. Ms. Juliet is a licensed guidance counselor and is currently the guidance counselor of the Ateneo de Manila Junior High School Department. We also greet Ms. Juliet, a belated happy birthday. It's her birthday yesterday. And we thank her too for being with us this entire series as our dear moderator during the question and answer portion. With our speaker and with our moderator this morning, I think that we will be in good hands. And so we welcome Dr. Tata for this morning's input on mental health program during pandemic and beyond. By the way, Dr. Tata is coming all the way from Cebu. So we hope that he'll be able to, to connect. Hello, good morning. Hi, Doc. Good okay morning, po. Hello. hello. Hello, hello. Good morning, brother. Um, okay na yung yeah. audio ko? Okay na? Okay po. Sige. So good morning once again. Um, yes, we can, we, we can hear you. Okay, uh, good morning once again, mga yung buntag sa tanan. Um, nandito po ako sa Cebu ngayon. And uh, uh, it's kind of sunny here. So it's kind of warm and at the same time um, a bit humid. So that's why I'm staying in a room, a room of my son. So he's here right now with me. So you know how it is. No? So uh, they don't have a class because it's Friday. Uh, they only have a class on Monday to Thursday. So... So well, um, the good uh, brother introduced me uh, to the group. No, so uh, I chatted with my son regarding his uh, activities, and and then I got a glimpse no, of how we are today, and uh, and I think this would be going on for the rest of the of the months because we are still under quarantine, and uh, though we ha are going back to our basic and daily routine. No, so I'm a psychologist at the same time, an educator. So I'll be entertaining clients while at the same time having classes. Well, on the other hand, my 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 children would be on their respective online classes, and uh, me and my wife would be online also, but as a teacher and at the same time a psychologist. And she is a physical educator. Um, I the the first session was more about mental health program uh, scope. Uh, it's more about um, uh, the scope of a, of a mental health program. And I, in the first session, I also introduced the difference between mental health program and guidance um, guidance program. Because uh, we are, I know that all of us are in in a academic institution and we have a already a built-in guidance program. So I think uh, in my first session, I discuss on how to integrate this uh, mental health program to the guidance program you know, because it's very difficult if you're going to start anew. But there are many things actually that we should bear in mind that a mental health program is somewhat different from a guidance program. So uh, this morning, I would attempt to introduce to you some of the things that would be hopefully useful um, as a service or as a program uh, for your school uh, at this time of the pandemic and hopefully beyond. Because I know for sure, though I am not a doomsday sayer, I think there will be more um, crisis with opportunities to come because uh, crisis with an opportunity because I, I found this actually, this crisis right now to be an opportunity as well to reflect on our person. And uh, the good brother asked you about your feeling and some of you mentioned about sadness and some of you mentioned about that you are happy and some of you mentioned about you're excited. And that's good actually because part of being mentally healthy is the recognition of our feelings. And, um, and as a gestural therapist, I would ask you to stay with your feeling and hopefully you can find meaning with your feeling. And if you recognize the particular feeling, it would actually dissipate. Uh, after some time, no. So, so take note, notice, recognize, and acknowledge your feeling, and try to know where that particular feeling is residing in your body right now. 
No, so you have also to embody that particular feeling right now. Meaning, uh, when you say that you have this particular feeling, try to know what part of your body now is being uh, affected by that particular feeling, because maybe your feeling is just um, it's just you know in your in your head. It's a cognitive thing. It's not really there in your body. So to to be more effective in handling or recognizing or dealing with your feeling, you should know where and what part of your body is affected by that particular thought of that particular feeling right now so actually i'm 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 uh, um i'm trying to connect what uh, the good brother asked you a while ago because this is actually part of the program so this is actually uh, things that you can do while um when you handle your class um online no so i know for sure that there are students who would who tell you uh, that they feel this and that and that they are actually bored so try to know what what makes them bored and in with that particular feeling what part of their body is manifesting that particular boredom so so as a person we would know more and at the same time recognize more on our body now uh, because it's the only vehicle that we can try to address so other things of course the cognitive thing um you can also address is the cognitive problem but it's more difficult so we must first try to deal with our body no so so that's part of the mental health program no that uh that i'll be discussing to you later okay let me check um network is unstable your stream may be lagging okay um as i said uh, last time I talked about the guidance and counseling program, and it is actually a legal mandate you know, for us to have a, a well-rounded guidance program. But sadly, a guidance program is has this particular stereotype. When you say stereotype, we would think of a guidance program with that and, uh, and uh, typically um, uh, a program for students. But uh, actually, when you say a comprehensive guidance program, it would involve not only the students, but also the teachers, the non-teaching personnel, and even the community. No, so, so part and parcel of a good mental health program as well is to include the whole community. So meaning the whole community, meaning the macro community and the micro community. So when you say macro, entire community, uh, you would include the LGU, local government units, and the civic organizations, and the other members of the par the particular community that is actively involved, you know, in 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 in, uh, in other services. On the other hand, when you say micro, that means the school. So you have to include also the program for your um, um, non-teaching personnel, uh, for the teachers, and as well for the parents. No, so 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 um and and with the particular services given by the guidance guidance office i think you should also include as i said uh try to reach out to the other community members and also offer your services to them and that would actually become a a a so-called migration from guidance and counseling program to a mental health program so why I mentioned mental health program, it's a form of migration. Because when you, when you do a mental health program, it would involve not just the, the, the basics uh, need, the mental health needs of a student or the other community members, but it would include you know, the whole scope of the person's life affairs. So meaning, if you're going to include mental health program, then there's a tendency that we would already include the other concerns not just the 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 uh, crisis about career, uh, um, crisis about academic, but you would also include the personal crisis. But as I said, since this is actually a form of guidance program, come mental health program, the primary focus is the student. But if you would want to to remodify at the same time recalibrate your guidance program to make it into a real mental health program that would address the dire needs of the times. And I think you should also include other programs as well. And um, in my pre previous discussion, I mentioned about referral. So strengthen your referral system because that is actually another form of 
intervention. So as a guidance counselor and as a teacher, you should collaborate with each other. And as a guidance counselor, you should collaborate and at the same time link with the outside organization so that you can better help your school system. So you could, um, with, with good linkages from the outside, like for example, you have uh, a link uh, of a, with a psychologist or a psychiatrist from the outside, then that's actually a good way of uh, linking with other with the with other professionals who can help you with your program because as i can see it there are actually many schools who don't have uh, adequate personnel especially with regards to mental health so the best thing that you could do is to strengthen your referral system so um in my case i used to be the guidance uh, university counselor of our of cebu normal university and i handled not only the college but also the graduate school and the uh, and the elementary school as well. So at that particular time, I have many linkages from the outside. So that's why even if I was just alone at that particular time, um, I tried to use the resources, the linkages that I have, that every month I would have um, activities you know, that uh, were facilitated and hosted by these different organizations. So it was actually a good link, good link up actually, and there are actually cases of were actually cases of um, um, psychiatric uh, uh, problems. Then, and at the same time with psycho legal problems, then I would refer them to the proper channel. So as you can see, it's a form of referral. At the same time, it's a form of linkages and networking actually. You know? so so I discussed this again. I reiterated this discussion because of the fact that that uh, a good mental health program is not just about intervention wherein you would uh, give counseling, wherein you would give therapy or other forms of intervention, but there are other services actu actually that you can offer. And, and a referral program is a good uh, service that you can offer as well. So, so as you can see, I'm talking about guidance program and I'm talking now about mental health program. And uh, while listening to me, Please be reflective of what you are hearing from me. You can be critical, of course, in your head, or you could be um, um, accommodating while at the same time be reflective and uh, think of what you can do uh, to your institution uh, with these things that I am discussing right now. And I know that we have, um, uh, this is actually a brief uh, presentation and we can have um, lots of uh, dialogue or discussions later after this so in the Q&A version. So you can uh, write down your, your questions and, um, and um, I'll try to answer that later. So uh, pertinent to discu the discussion on guidance uh, program and also with mental health program, um, there are actually many ways to, to in uh, preparing a mental health program. Um, but this is the usual way and I say the usual way because you would always involve with your um, what we call um, assessment. So assessment has three phases. Uh, for some, we'll add that it is a continuing process. And I believe that it is actually a continuing process because even if you are already done with the program, you should also assess as well. So as you can see in my slide, you would see there that there's the, need as the assessment, the pre-assessment of the needs of the population. So, so, so um, in other quarters, in others, um, they call this needs assessment. So I know for sure that you already have your existing program, but if you would want to know if this program is effective or not, or if it should be still there in your particular pro program, then I think you should uh, uh, evaluate this particular program, especially at this time of the pandemic. So, so actually there are many programs that are, uh, that needs to be recalibrated like for example counseling we should ca recalibrate our counseling forte into a different style and so as of this time we now have telecounseling or uh, teletherapy so that is actually a form of recalibration because i know for sure that we cannot do it uh, face to face or in person engagement so we would now try to use telecounseling and but um, our service would not just end there. So you have to also to evaluate if this is actually a feasible program. Like for example, in, in my case here in Cebu, uh, it is uh, the, the 
ambivalent actually as ang ambivalent reception of online online therapy online counseling because of the fact that there are actually especially those who are older uh, they cannot uh, navigate the online platform well so um, in my experience most of my clients are young, of younger age like for example um, teenagers and and young professionals because they are they are uh, online savvy and at the same time they know the technology so that's why they can easily uh, reach out to mental health professionals for help. So, um, in case it's like this, I think um, we should assess. So how so how can we better be of help to them? So that's the first part of the um, of making a program. So evaluation, assessment, and after that, um, if you have already a a result, then you can actually negotiate and at the same time collaborate and consult with other professionals. And after that, you can actually review. There are many literatures um, online right now, and uh, a good resource or resources of of of, um, of mental health activities, mental health programs that you can do online and in person. Um, um, you can actually visit uh, WHO and also UNICEF. So they have vast resources of how, what to do and how to do. And it's practical, actually. They, they, they try to simplify things so that we can uh, we can understand and apply it uh, effectively to our, um, our stakeholders. You know? so, so try to, to try to scout some literatures for review and at the same time uh, so that it can scaffold your program later. Then after that, you also have to uh, review your vision and mission. No? So as I said, because you cannot just make a program out of out of your out of the out of the, your, the need of the students, because you also have to to make your program reflective of the mission and vision of the school. Because there are actually many programs that you can do that can be constraints that can be uh, tapered by your mission and vision. So it should be in line. No, so 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 there should be a a good relationship between your program. And the program of your of your institution, and after that, so you can actually uh, make the program and then try it out for for quite a time, and um, um, implement and then disseminate. Well, well, of course, you should have a feasible budget also. And after that, after some times, maybe uh, a year or two, then you um, you assess again and evaluate the program it's a, if it's effective or not and try, try to check um, um, portions of it that are not effective and then try to modify it or recalibrate it then after that implement and then do it again so basically that's the process of making a program so at this time um, I know that we will we have actually difficulties in in doing some assessment especially that this is an online transaction and and uh, we have a problem um, with how to make some forms of engagement. So the best um, way actually is to be creative and innovative. So just like for instance, in, in um, aside from, in my case, aside from um, giving surveys online, uh, we will try also to call the parents and the, and the students. Uh, um, if they cannot be accommodated online, then they can be accommodated over the traditional media, and that is the mobile phones or or the traditional landline phones. No, so let's try to be creative with, with how we we do our, our assessment. Okay, so now that you have your assessment, uh, this is just a guide. Right? I know, uh, uh, though this is somewhat. Uh, um, brief at the same time comprehensive but you can actually add more no so so a good mental health program like for example you have already your assessment and then you you already would want to make a program no so so try to check on these things so as you can see the different facets that i am showing in this presentation is not actually only for for the students but also for the teachers because um a good teacher, a healthy teacher, can actually can produce a good and healthy student. No, so 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 in this time of pandemic, the the issue actually is not on our students. No, so it's our actually the teacher. 
and on the part of the student it's actually not the student but the parents no so we should try to equip and give more resources to the parents so that they can better handle the the students because um, they are now actually our shadow teacher so unlike before when we have our shadow teacher in our school in our classroom but this time it's different it is them actually so so as as teachers we are um just um we are actually now um technically facilitator of learning you no know? and then uh transmit this learning um resources to the parents and at the same time the parents would um implement the, at the same time um give that to their children you no know? so so going back to my slide so as you can see there um health investments no health promotions these are actually for the parents uh, for the teachers and for the other and teaching per, uh, personnel no so so what i'm trying to focus here is actually uh, a support for those who would be the frontliners as of this time of the pandemic no so 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 in this case as you can see it's not mere uh, for students because uh, we already have many things for the students actually and then all we have to do is to migrate these poor services online and to the other components no but this is actually the often neglected uh, components no the for the teachers and the, for the non the teaching personnel no so so um, you can check on there on my slides uh, health promotions no health incentives so these are actually things that you can do but the problem here here actually is uh, this other activities that I have mentioned here on my slides are good for uh, in person no the traditional uh, setup of engagement so try to be innovative and creative especially with how you would do now with intramurals and health fest and other and other activities no so for sure you will have especially that now uh, some of our communities are already in the in the modified um, uh, quarantine mode Okay, so this is actually a, a reiteration of what I've said a while ago, the difference between guidance and mental health programs, and then you're going to migrate from guidance to the mental health programs, no? So as you can see there, basically they have the same uh, services, assessment, counseling, and therapy, training, development, referral, linkages, advocacy. The only thing that is different from mental health and the guidance is yeah, with regards to the what they call moderate to severe cases or problems. No? So it needs psychiatric. So so to offset this particular problem of your guidance office, then we will go back to the term on referral service. So strengthen the referral and linkages services. So, so, so that's actually uh, a way of uh, dealing with the uh, with, uh, inadequacy of a guidance program. Okay, so um just like a mental health program a guidance program is actually has three facets no or tier tier no so this is actually the prevention the remediation and the intervention so in the prevention it's more on um promoting wellness and well-being and remediation it's more on uh, intervening some problems like for example a crisis and when you say intervention so from a simple all moderate crisis if the crisis would become severe then you need to have some intervention no so so technically these three facets of a or framework of mental programs are always there uh, even if you are uh, if your uh, school only has um, guidance program then basically uh, your guidance program already have uh, already has prevention program uh, it's already has a remediation program or intervention program so uh, again try to be reflective if this, if this is actually what you have so this is the tiered system approach no so prevention intervention or uh, remediation no so so as you can see um in in tier one so this is actually the prevention phase. Um, the involvement there would be the whole uh, system, no, our school system. So basic services or programs that you can offer. Uh, we have advocacy, info dissemination, 
uh, active involvement of all stakeholders. And uh, actually, um, when you say advocacy, this is actually part of the promotion. So um, in some schools, actually, they don't have um, serious problems or they have not encountered yet any forms of serious uh, uh, crisis. Um, um, maybe they, they have a small population or or their students and uh, teachers and they are very um, optimally functioning. But that doesn't mean that you don't have to make a program. So you still have to make a program to scaffold and at the same time to continue and support the functioning of the entire community. And that is actually a prevention program. And uh, on the other hand, when you say remediation or the remedial programs, this is actually well, wherein we have our counseling, our coaching and mentoring um, activities. So as you can see, this is somewhat the same with the tier one, wherein there is a health promotion because when you say, when you say health promotions, you can still do um, counseling, uh, mentoring, coaching, consultation, psychoeducation, scaffolding. So you can actually do these uh, services uh, with the tier one on prevention. But this time, when you say remediation on tier two, that means that um, you can see that there's an impending problem or, or you can, um, per intuition, you can see that there's a looming um, uh, looming crisis going on with this, with this, with this particular community or, or classroom or students. Then you can actually intervene using this uh, particular uh, formats. No, so counseling, mentoring, and uh, coaching. But take note, um, as of this uh, time, actually, um, it's actually hard for the counselors to do these all things alone. So that's why we can actually train the teachers to do some forms of mentoring, coaching, and, uh, and other therapeutic setup. So why I said therapeutic? Um, therapeutic in the sense that um, they are not doing therapy, but what they can do is to alleviate some stress and concerns. Um, um, like, for example, um, um, dealing with simple problems. No, so 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 what the the student no or the the the, the parent perhaps needs is actually a support communication. So communication is, is, a, is not a therapy. It is just there that you can do to support uh, the other person. So you just listen to that person and uh, in an effective way and in a healthy way, and then hopefully the, um, the, the person can, can be elevated with a particular concern. So it's different actually from therapeutic. And so therapy is different from therapeutic. Okay. So this is actually what I've mentioned a while ago. No, so so let me proceed with my slides. But take note when you say mental health, no, so it's there that the focal office is the human resource department. So if it's uh, if in uh, in this case you have a human resource department and a guidance office, then they should collaborate. But the focus for for the non-teaching personnel and for the te teacher is for the human resource department. So the, uh, the guidance office should focus more on the students and for the parents. Okay, so these are actually some of the uh, programs no, that we are now in. So like for example, uh, we are now migrating to online platform no, because uh, as I said, it's because of the pandemic. And uh, this would not, not, not be, um, uh, until this, I think this month already. So I think perhaps it would still go on for you for, for, for months. Like for example, next year we still have this kind of pro, uh, uh, platform. No, so uh, of course we, we have our online classes, and then we have on uh, our online co-curricular activities. And I don't know how you would do it, but uh, useful tools would be resourcefulness, innovativeness, and creativity. And of course we uh, we have our online guidance program. Uh, guidance and counseling services and of course you also have our online transactions so i'll discuss more on this different um, um platform 
except for online uh, transactions because that's uh, that is not part of the mental mental health setup. That's part of the administrative setup actually. Okay, no, so we have three models no, that I'm going to introduce to you. The integrated psychosocial support model, the incidental psychosocial support, and an inadequate psychosocial support. When you say integrated psychosocial support, um, your classes, your lessons, your, your curriculum um, is oriented towards wellness and well-being of your students. So that means uh, if it's integrated, that means it is already embedded in your program. So meaning every time that you would hold or conduct classes, and in each lesson, there's, an, there's a, a, a glimpse of a mental health uh, activities there. So what are these activities? Perhaps it's, 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 it's just processing, uh, it's uh, sharing, uh, it's feedbacking, it's disclosing, or it could be just a, a mere expression of the person's feelings or thoughts at that particular time. Like for example, you uh, you ask the person to draw, or you ask the person to to, to write a story. That is actually a good form of 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 uh, psychosocial support. But take note um, when you let the person do something, then make sure that you have you can process it. No, because uh, if it's not processed, like for example, you can you would not ask the the, the student about uh, the feeling while he or she doing the activity. Then. Uh, then that particular activity is of no use. No, it's not. It has not reached to the point where you, you were able or you're able to connect with that particular student. So to connect with the student, you should have a dialogue with your student. And when you have a dialogue, you can ask questions. You can uh, you can acknowledge the activity and the feeling. Well, at the same time, when you say dialogue, you can also process the feelings. Meaning you can go deeper by asking questions about this particular drawing in relation to his or her experience at that particular time. Okay, the other one is the incidental no? psychosocial support. And the other one is uh, inadequate psychosocial support, as I said. So the ideal program actually, take note, this is for teachers. This is not for, um, um, for uh, though this can be for counselors also, but when you say online psychosocial support, uh, um, this is actually um, um, for classroom instructions and classroom management. No? So, so in this set setup, actually, um, um, the teacher would play a role as a mental health promoter. Okay. So as you can see, <clears throat> uh, it's embedded in the subject lesson, and then. It's parent-centered psychosocial support, especially if it's you're dealing with young children. So young children, what do you mean by young children? Um, this means to say that uh, pre-elementary school students, um, students below um, um, nine years old, no, so uh, ten years old even, though they still need some some um, um, significant parent supervision or, or guardian supervision, then your support would be for the integration of this um, um, mental health or mental wellness or well-being um, also for the parent. And then, as I said, you know, the teacher will serve as facilitator of learning and therapeutic support, you know, especially for young children. And if you're dealing with young children, and then you should also include the physical, relational, and psychological aspects in your program. So meaning what do you mean by physical? So uh, as you can see right now, one of the problems, as per mentioned by UNICEF and WHO, is the sedentary behaviors of our of our younger uh, students right now. So they are at home; they would do nothing, and in fact, they would become gadget dependent, and uh, or uh, they are always glued on television. So, at least try to include in your curriculum or in your lesson or in your subject uh, some forms of physical activities. So. So you can actually team up with your uh, PE instructors. Actually, um, the, the good term right now is no longer PE instructors, but fitness instructors or fitness coach, because they are actually now, uh, the physical educators are now um, utilizing their skills you know, on helping um, um, to address the problems on sedentary and unhealthy lifestyles. 
no, of the community. No? So, and um, also include some relational aspects there. When you say relational, you could uh, ask the student to interview the parents no, about this and that. So in a way, this would also improve the dialogical um, system between the family and, uh, and the student. Well, of course, when you say psychological, uh, the things that I have mentioned a while ago uh, regarding uh, different activities, then it can be psychological in a way if there's an element of expression and there's an element of support and um, there's an element of insight. So that means um, even just learning new things is a form of psychological support, actually. Like, for example, you ask the student to, to, to make an origami. No, that is actually a form. And then after that, um, you process the, the, the procedures and the systems that the student is using. And uh, while processing the student, you ask him about his or her feelings. And that is actually a good form of psychosocial support already. So guidance counselors act now as coaches and consultants to teachers and to parents. So when you say online psychosocial support, this is actually... As I said, no, for, for teachers, no. So now the guidance counselor would act as coaches and consultants, no, not only to the to the teachers, but also to the parents. No, so on some issues, like for example, prevention and remediation, because if it's serious already and you can see that there's a serious problem, then they have to refer that particular problem to the guidance counselor. No, so again, as you can see there, a good referral, no referral point. Okay. Um, incidental, no? So you say incidental, it's purely academic. So, so I think most of us uh, has, has this type of uh, program before the pandemic. Uh, when you say incidental, no, you just wait for the problem to occur and then you refer to, uh, to the counselor. No, so, so, so uh, it would, problems would only be addressed if it would arise. So if there's no problem, then there's no, there's no program, there's no remediation. So, so this is not actually a good program, no. But some of us, I think, still has this kind of setup. So, so what I would want to recommend is the integrated setup, no. So, but as you can see, on um, with incidental psychosocial support, there's actually psychosocial support, perhaps, but it's not that active, like the integrated psychosocial support. So, so. Uh, the word there is incidental. So meaning if there's an incident of something, then uh, the mental health uh, intervention or prevention or remediation or whatever that is would come in. So basically um, um, not effective at this, as of this time. Okay. Okay, so let me here something's happened with the audio it's breaking it's clear but breaking okay i think i have an intermittent connection let me check okay let me proceed it's now stable again so the third um framework or model actually is the inadequate psychosocial support no so before uh, i i i pray that this is no longer existing this kind of setup because it's purely academic, no? So, and it's more of teacher-centered, and and um, and uh, problems. If there's a psychosocial problems, then the, the teacher would just refer it to the counselor, and then the counselor would refer it to the to the um, um, to to other um, professionals. So, like for instance, the um, uh, psychiatrist psychologists and then they would not really handle the problem so so this is actually a common occurrence before okay and uh, again so I'm lagging okay let me check for my connection again so there's a no Okay. Um, the the other thing that you can do actually is uh, the term online co curricular activities. 
So when you say online cultural activities, then um, you can or you should involve the family. Uh, it should be holistic, not only um, with just one facet, like for example, for the cognitive i know that if it's academic then it's basically cognitive but as of this time as i said we should include the other things like for example physical social uh relational and even the spiritual aspects so so uh, a good co-curricular activities like for example um is um asking the family to join uh in a program like for example you can ask the the the, the, uh, the family to to perform uh, over a recorded video and then submit that to the teacher, you no, know, or to the group, you no. Know? So actually, it's a form of uh, co-curricular activities. Actually, I, I didn't know how how you would gonna set this up, but I um, um I would like to admit that I would rather focus more on the on the teachers rather than on these particular activities. But it's actually I included this because I saw this also, and we are using this uh, uh, now, you no. Know? So I'm actually preparing a program for our school, and then. Uh, these are actually parts of the things that we would be uh, doing, no? So, so we are thinking of um, uh, in, in joining the the whole family, not just the students, uh, with regards to co-curricular activities. Okay, so uh, I know for sure that you already have your guidance program, no? So again, uh, as I said, um, when you say um, mental health program for uh, during this time for, of the pandemic and beyond. So I'm, I would rather uh, focus more on the teacher. So equipping more of the teacher, you know, uh, giving them some resources, you no know, resources and coaching, resources and processing, uh, resources and supportive communication. So that's why the previous talk, uh, anchors on PFA. So it's a good, good, uh, um, good point actually, because of the fact that it's it's um, uh, it can actually enhance the teacher's way of listening to. Uh, and uh, doing some um, support for the students. Um, so these are actually some of the things that um, that you can do, and I think uh, some of you are already doing this. You know, so these are actually what they call best practices because um, um, I've been doing some surveys, and and um, most of my colleagues actually you know some guidance counselors and psychologists they are doing this also you know so teleconsulting not teleconsultation and uh you already have you know, psychological first aid and then some of you also introduce mindfulness you know so so mindfulness activities for teachers and for students and then some of us um include also parent effectiveness training and uh, don bosco already um, introduce this also no, as part of your uh, webinar. And then what I've discussed to you no, uh, with regards to integrated psychosocial support is this embedded module. No? So embedded is the psychosocial support in the module. And uh, others no, are uh, asking students to do some forms of journaling exercises. No? So journaling in the sense that they, they, they would write uh, their experiences no, on a journal. And then we also have therapeutic classroom management. So um, in my case, you know, in our school, uh, it's a university, and we also have a laboratory school you know, for pre-elementary students and for uh, elementary and high school. So, excuse me, what I'm, um, I'm introducing to them is the therapeutic classroom management. You no, know? so PFA is a part of the therapeutic classroom management setup. You no, know? so but uh, the emphasis there is uh, how to ground, how to embody it, and how to be aware. No, so meaning when you say ground and embodied, this is are are all actually um, are related to the mindfulness setup. No, so but take note. Um, I'm a gestalt therapist. I don't use the word mindfulness often no? because of the fact that uh, there's a connotation there that you are just using your mind. No, so so um, in my case, I would rather want to use awareness because when you say awareness, no, so so you can be aware of your uh, awareness, meaning you can be aware of your mindful mindfulness. You can be aware of your somatic uh, sense, no, uh, meaning your body, yeah, your movement, no, your feelings, no. So, so it's more comprehensive actually. So that's why I'm using the word awareness. We say attunement. It's actually what we call congruence, no. So, so um, as teachers, we should be able to 
um, to acknowledge the feelings of our students and at the same time know their know the the actuations no even if they won't tell us about their feelings and then you would you can see online or in person their actuations then you, you can attune your questions your way of asking questions your way of uh, of uh, feedbacking uh, to the feeling or to the express behavior of that particular student at the time no so that's that is what they call attunement dialogue on the other hand is um, when you say dialogue, it means your ability to 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 hold um, hold a deeper communication with each other, not to the other person, especially to your students. So when you say dialogue, it's an exchange of interaction, um, authentic interaction, honest interaction between you and the student. No, so so part of this exercise and dialogue actually is you know recognizing the feeling. No, so so part of that. Uh, what you call therapeutic classroom management. So it's actually e classroom nisha therapeutic uh, e classroom management. So so the important uh, word there is I think it's more on presence. So presence. So so try to um, introduce some presence. So when you say presence, so um, uh, like for example, no, uh, let us call each student by their name, and at the same time um, we can give feedback about what they are doing. Or like for example, what you can see on the screen, you give them feedback. Like for example, oh, I can see that you are doing this and that. I can see that you are in this particular room. Now that is actually another way of doing grounding and at the same time dialogue. No, so so that's part of the therapeutic classroom management. Anyway, um, um, I uh, there's actually a supplementary notes. No, so so actually it's it's included there. No, so these are part and parcels of a good. Uh, mental health program uh, as of this time and for beyond. So I think the, um, the, the gist of my discussion is actually um, therapeutic support. So when you say therapeutic support, so, so um, this is now focused more on the teachers. So um, for those of you, uh, for, uh, for the administrators who are here right now, I would recommend that you equip more the, the, the teachers with different facets of psychosocial support, uh, effective listening, healthy listening, authentic listening, and how to give a healthy feedback, no, not only for the parents, but also for the, for the students. No? And at the same time, um, also support, no? um, psychosocial support for the teachers. Because as I said, um, a problematic teacher cannot handle well no? uh, a class like this. No, online class is, is taxing, and at the same time, and a challenging, especially it's it's a it's a new way of doing thing, no? So 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 um, um, accommodate also the need of the of the of the teachers, no? Psychosocially, so so deal with their emotions, their psychological problem problems and concerns, no? So that they can be effectively dealing with your with the, with your students, no? So actually, all of these things I've mentioned would fall under psychosocial support contingencies. So um, contingencies are actually because they are, these are actually uh, things that you can um, uh, use if in case other things would fall, other uh, things would fail. So if, um, um, if there's a problem, um, for example, with regards to, to the student online, like for example, the student is crying, then the best contingency is actually is to address that particular problem. So by doing some forms of online uh, counseling or online telecon uh, consultation, or if you can see that the student is uh, having some problems, uh, like for example, with their parents or, the, or, 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 or their family, then you can other, do other things. You know? so, so these are, are actually what we call contingencies. So, uh, but do not limit your, yourselves on this particular um, aspects that I'm talking to you now, because there are many more. And as I said, uh, there are many resources, uh, especially um, um, at the village O and UNICEF. You can see there are many resources that you can use. So I think that's it. So as you can see, as I said, uh, the use of the word support. So when you say support, um, this time of the pandemic and in a classroom setting, so let us give more support to the teachers. 
no? but on the other side for the students then support for the parents no? so good morning i'm ready for our q a portion please type in your question or if you want to directly ask question to doc data it can be you just have to uh, unmute your mic so um first of all thank you doc data, for sharing your expense extensive experiences with us so um very practical ang mga nasabi nyo. and well some are ideal but of course we can make it real diba? migration yeah. into a real uh and process okay yeah. so siguro i'll wait for the questions i think um, they are still reflecting yeah maybe yes, ma'am juliet because um there's actually some glitches with uh in my presentation so may ano nga nasabi mm -hmm. dito na uh may uh, may audio problem so if uh, mm -hmm. there's a need for clarification then uh, feel free to ask okay so yes, um, please uh, turn in your questions. Um, yeah, siguro um, I'll. Okay, um, you mentioned doc. Uh, what interests me in your talk, talaga? So just opening the question and answer, no? Is the is um, you you mentioned about supportive and collaborative activities, no? So it, it's quite interesting yes. because, um, well, in this time of pandemic, we need to to have a venue to have like um, a lighter mode of activities for our mental health. So can you give yeah. a specific example of this? Um, like for instance, no. So uh, actually, um, I'm producing this because um, I'm also trying to introduce this to our school, no? So it's part of our program, mm -hmm. actually, with regards to co-curricular activities, no? So, like, for example, no? The, the team is uh, um, is planning to ask, you know, the family uh, to do some forms of uh, recorded uh, dance exercise, no? And uh, you can actually, at times, you can, you can also give some forms of instructions wherein you would ask the family to do something like, for example, um uh, a free base exercise or free based activity wherein you would just do nothing and record everything on screen and then after that you're gonna mm -hmm. present it uh, uh on screen so in that way it's fun it's relaxing and there's no since there is no instructions no so there's no pressure involved so so the element there is fun at the same time uh, it can build cam camaraderie or, or or some forms of um, um connection between the parents and the the student mm -hmm. no, and other that no, yeah, for example that, that, you can also ask uh, yeah the, the family to to have a family drawing like for example you ask the the, the, the kid to draw a line then after that no but it, it would be on screen it would be recorded no? so so draw a line and then uh, uh, the student is asked to um to to ask one person in the family to continue with the drawing so it's actually a, a form of um, group group family exercise or uh, or a sort of a collaborative exercise actually so there are many things actually that you can do no? so let us just be creative and resourceful at the same time innovative yeah so as long as it can be therapeutic no both to well to all stakeholders siguro what i can add to this doc is creating um although it's gonna be hard because it's online creating a mental health day or a mental health week where um there's a portion will chichilang um siguro we have to capital capitalize on the hobbies of the students no kung maraming mahilig kumanta o kung maraming yeah. mahilig sumayaw parang short programs like that no involving yeah. also the parents and the families no? yeah or you, okay. you can so, have a, uh, what you call, yeah, yeah sorry, sorry, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Ms. Juliet, sorry po. Uh, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I have know, a question, uh, pero finish. What, what I would, yeah, I would want to add, no, maybe you can have a, what you call, uh, crazy day. So, Marie, you would post something, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, crazy, you no, know? so, so crazy things that you would do or, or crazy make up or crazy get up, no. 
and um, that that's actually a fun field activity actually so that you can do you know? so, so so that would help the distress not only the teachers but also the students wow crazy i think, I think the question, students uh, will gonna love um, it. yeah there's a question for, so doc that here um in reference to your talk today it is a reflection that mental health is not a priority in the academy what is your take in the absence of school psychologists and lacking of guidance counselor in schools, colleges, and universities? Actually, the inadequacy of guidance counselor, counselor in, in our school system is actually looming. And it has been there for quite a time already. And um, that's why uh, in this presentation, I focus more on the mental health aspect aspect of promotion uh, towards the teacher because the teachers can also help us you no know? so so um, we cannot actually address this particular problem by just you know uh, hiring some counselors because uh, um, counselors right now are actually um, um, I think the ideal number for a counselor is one uh, to 500 if I'm right mom Juliet one is to 500 students or 1,000 because the before it's one is to five hundred, but uh, right now I think they are they are trying to expand it, at least to accommodate. You no, know? so it's one to one. Uh, the ratio is one to one thousand. You no, know? but I think that is still not enough. So that's why, uh, instead of focusing more on the guidance program, why not uh, migrate our mental health program, or mental health activities, you no, know, in the classroom. So so it's more of mm -hmm. a preventive and remedial approach approach rather than interventive or intervention approach no so so but I, I i know this is challenging no this is uh difficult for for some but but take note that we already have some existing programs no that are actually a form of therapeutic uh, program or support program and all you have to do no is to recognize that this is actually a therapeutic pro program especially in in, in uh, like for example no some teachers would ask their students about uh, to write an essay about this and that and that is actually a good exercise actually a therapeutic exercise because that is actually um, uh, a form of ventilation uh, expression and you can also gain insight out of it but and uh, i know that there are teachers who would just leave there as that after you know they would just give some course or or comment and after that they would just leave that particular work uh, on their desk but if you're gonna do this therapeutically then you have to process the feelings of the student you now try to read the essay and then process the feelings of that particular student and in that way that would become therapeutic you know so so it's true so if you're gonna hire educational psychologists uh, take note when you say educational psychologists they cannot actually handle counseling and therapy you know they, they would just be there as a consultant and at the same time they would address some of the concerns and they would refer the, the same concerns to the counselors no so so if, even if, if you're gonna hire educational psychologists then that would still be a problem so because of inadequacy of numbers so for example you have around five thousand or one thousand students and then you only have one educational psychologist so it the the educational psychologist would still need the assistance of the guidance counselors so still the same problem <laughs> yeah. Yes, Mom Juliet. You may, I think, I think you may, so. you, you, have, you have something to add. <laughs> yeah, I, I think talagang it's a reality that there are lacking guidance counselors. No, hindi lang dahil hindi din kaya ng school mag-employ, pero talagang kulang, kulang na kulang din talaga ang number of counselors. Um, at maganda yung idea niyo, Doc, na parang if psychosocial support, pwede naman yung teacher mag-come in. And yun po, yung importance ng teacher and counselor collaboration, very important. Kasi sa teachers are yeah. frontliners. Eh. Marami silang nakikita sa mga essays, sa mga drawings, sa mga sharing. You can um, refer to your counselors. Kasi hindi malalaman yun ng counselors pag hindi nyo po dinala sa kanila. So yun yeah. lang po yung dagdag ko. So we have a question, another question, Doc. Would you recommend chat counseling with the use of messaging app? apps or tools when helping students with their emotional problems and concerns especially with the possible biases in counseling students in their own home yes where the walls have many ears to listen to the online counseling yeah session. That, that's actually a, a problem no with regards to confidentiality and anonymity and knowing for the fact that uh, in our setup you no know, for example
So, medyo nag-vlog po si Doc. So, antayin lang natin. So, this is a very real question, no? That happens, well, actually, is already happening. And siguro ako may take as a counselor. We have to meet the students where they are. No, kung ano yung um kung ano yung platform na makaka-reach out tayo sa kanila. Okay, we're still yeah, waiting yeah. for Doc Tata. Yeah. Um yeah, chat counseling I'm here is not na. a very good <laughs> uh, now, choice, pero kung yun na lang yung natitira para makareach out tayo, I think pwede naman yun. Basta we 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 just put it on parang second Parang backup plan. Because, yeah, it's it's very different when they're at home, no? Yung iba, lalo na yung iba, wala silang own, own um, room to to have that private conversation with you. So, siguro as, as a counselor, you just have to feel, no? Kung, kung pwedeng i-turn on nila yung video nila while doing the counseling session, kung kaya ng bandwidth, mas makakatulong yun sa atin. Kasi makikita mo doon yung kung may dumadaan or hindi talaga safe na mag-open up sila sa inyo. And even if the 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 month does even if hindi natin nakikita we, we have to feel no um we have to um look at our i mean feel our gut feeling na feel natin yun eh kung in face to face itong bata na to nakausap ko na before hindi naman siya ganito nagsa-stutter or nag-hesitate so baka merong sa background may nakikinig eh, hindi siya makapagsalita you can if you're using zoom or chat merong mero zoom or google meet diba meron naman chat so you can chat to the kid na you can chat to the kid no is it okay if if you talk yung parang ganun so yeah yung migration from online verbal siguro into chat counseling can be an can be a venue no for for that and um siguro what can help also with counseling is establishing a protocol no a uh, guidance counseling um, protocol wherein uh, mag-agree na kayo ng bata before starting the counseling o pag ganito pag na puto yung connection we have to wait for each other 15 minutes or if you cannot talk like there's someone beside you, dapat meron tayong magic word, like magsabi ka ng blue. Pag sinabi ng bata na blue, for example, alam mo na na hindi siya makapagsalita ng maayos. So, mga ganong techniques. So, this is a very new um, platform, the online counseling. So, we just have to be creative para mas ma-reach out natin yung mga bata. Okay, so siguro, mamaya siguro dadagdagan na lang yan ni Doc Tata, no? Um, I, so I'm already here. <laughs> Wala pa? Yeah. Yan, mukhang nandito na si Doc Tata. Hey, I'm here na. <laughs> Can you hear me, Ma'am? Juliet? So I hope po nakatulong Can po you? 'yun. Um, pero always po um, go back to your administrators, the school policy kung ano yung first platform na gagamitin niyo, sundin niyo po 'yun. Pero kung may problema kayo doon, you could always recommend, but you must inform you must inform the school that um, you're doing counseling, for example, in in FB Messenger, para lang aware sila. And that's also for your protection. Ayan, Doc Tata is back. Okay. Hello, Doc? Yeah, um, I'm just Hello? by the no, side, no? Lis listening to... <laughs> Hello? Can you hear me, ma'am? Hello? Ayan, medyo... Ayan, ayan. Okay. Okay, now so let me continue with uh, with the question about uh, chat counseling. Yes, yes, yes. So, so I'm actually listening maybe to your um, choppy, maybe um, choppy. Phone. Yeah. Okay, I'm actually listening. Um, yes, yes. Listening, and then I can. I, I've heard your your statement, and I think uh, I would confirm. Na talagang mahirap yung yung chat counseling. So, okay, so uh, let me <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mom Reg. No, so so let me go go back to my discussion on um, on uh, counseling online so um, if you are dealing with a child I think that the best way to deal with a child's problem is to involve the parents no so in that way there would be no confidentiality problem involved no so you have to um, to ask the the parents 
or anyone in the family to join in with the counseling. Uh, so it would be now a family counseling approach. No? So if you're the dealing with the teenagers, of course, they would ask for some privacy. No? So, but take note, legally, the parents can still intervene. But the problem would be is on ethics. So you have to ask the child some permission that you should include you would include the parents and you have to let the the, the teenagers or the teenager um, um, understand that this is actually a, a setup and your counseling individual counseling would still proceed to family counseling especially if the problem is not only for is in um, is on the family no so so technically uh, yung individual counseling natin, no, my tendency na mag-evolve ito into family counseling. And as you know it, I think, and based on uh, data actually ngayon, yung problema ng mga bata natin, aside from yung mga uh, boredom, yung anxiety, no, mayroong problema rin yung sa regarding sa relationship. No? So, 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 ano yun eh, parang connected yan, no, to each other. So, so I think we should opt for family counseling uh, instead of individual counseling. If you can see that the problem is not only personal and it's familial or relational. No, so yun ang ano natin, ang magagawa natin. Okay. So maybe while we're waiting for Miss Julian to come back, uh, we'll um, already post some of the questions um, posted here by our um, our audience for today. So I don't know if this was answered already, uh, Dr. Tata, the one from Miss Bernadette. Um, in reference to your talk today, it is a reflection of the mental health. It's not a priority in the academe. What is your take in the absence of school psychologists and lacking of guidance counselors in schools, colleges, and universities? Um, I, I think I have already answered that, Ma'am Reg. No? But uh, let, me, yeah, let, let me add na lang, no? So as I said, no, yung focus natin is if it's that that's the case and that's the reality actually, no. So yung yung focus natin is equipping the teachers more on uh, psychosocial support or therapeutic support, no. So um, aside from WHO and UNICEF, actually there are also other websites, no, that are are give giving uh, free seminars, uh, free workshops, webinars on on um psychosocial support you can actually do that no you, you can actually uh, check on it and then and as, as a teacher i think it's part of our mandate no to 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 um to to develop our professional um, um vocation also no so it's part of our our, our uh, developmental self development program no so i think you uh, kailangan nating mag ano lang no resourceful lang na maki Kasi marami naman dyan eh sa, sa, sa web, website no, or sa online, yung mga resources na yun. Okay, I think Miss Juliet is back. Uh, can you hear us, Miss Juliet? Can you hear us? Oh, I think there's still a problem with her line. Okay, maybe we continue with the next question. Uh, maybe hopefully later on, um, Miss Juliet's yeah. connection would be more stable. So, Mr. Michael yeah. Rebudo. Uh, he says, yes, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, Mom Reg, I can hear you. Yeah. So here, we use anecdotals in schools. Do you think it can help for teachers to assist them in their studies? And also as a guidance for the guidance counselors to assess them whenever they have a problem? Yeah, actually, it's, it's a good form of activity and at the same time exercise not to include anecdotal records actually and, and in fact no in some schools they are still using that no so so maganda yun, no it's a, it's a good practice actually to, to continue with that particular setup yung anecdotal records yeah, they can help yeah uh yung ano lang siguro yung uh, and, ko is yung uh, yeah a creation of support group no so support group for teachers. No, I think in your school you should also have an online support group for teachers, wherein every at least uh, before the start of class or after the end of the uh, during before the weekend, no, my my online gathering kayo at least for thirty minutes, eh, wherein you can share your concerns and problems. So it's a form of debriefing actually. No, so so maganda yon, no, na, na set up na 
pwede rin maka-ventilate kayo ng mga concerns and problems niyo online no, and help each other. No, and then, mas maganda kung mayroong guidance counselor na mag-facilitate no, or a mental health professional na mag-facilitate. Yes. From Ms. Uh, Mr. Robaldes Comia, um, in what manner can the counselor establish discipline in chat counseling? What are the factors to be considered? As I said, no. So we are more uh, equipping. If you're dealing, talking about the school side, then uh, let us equip the teachers. But if you're talking about the student side, then let us equip the parent. So this is actually a a a a. Uh, non-traditional setup actually because we are bringing the school to the house to the home environment no but take note in the home environment iba yung may disciplinary authority doon so hindi yung yung teacher so kaya nga um, yung mga students ngayon especially online at saka nasa elementary at high school or sa preschool dapat may guardian talaga sila while they are um, attending our classes no, so hindi pwedeng pababayaan sila ng mga parents nila. No? So dapat mayroon mayroon talaga silang uh, guardians or parents on their side the, who can help them. So yung discipline uh, so um we the parents yeah. Uh, so really no uh, at, at this time uh, the situation that we are in there is a big demand no in in terms of um hands-on participation of the parents. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Is that correct? No. Yes. Yeah, and um, but uh, take note, no, even on my side, no, fair experience ko as a parent at the same time a teacher. Now, may mga parents talaga na hindi makaintindi, no, they cannot understand that this is actually a new setup and a new format, and then uh, this needs their cooperation and um, and um, at the same time their understanding, no, that this is a that the the students no need their support not only you know um, psychological support but also the physical support that they have to be there you now while 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 the students are attending their classes mm, yeah it's it, it, it this one really is a different um it's a it's a paradigm shift no, for everybody the situation yeah, yeah. that we have here mm. yeah from this mm. janeline tolenada she she says here with regards with, with parent effectiveness training which guidance services can it be included? What strategies can we do to conduct this training in this new normal? Actually, um, the basics, like for example, effective communication. No, so so let us uh, teach our parents on how to listen to our students to or to their children effectively, not uh, in that way that they would not encounter any forms of conflict uh, or. Um, um, uh, other forms of problem, no. So, so the first I think is effective communication, and and, and most of the uh, parent effectiveness training are anchor anchor on this, no. So basically, that's the start, no. So communication, and after that, defining boundaries. So when you say the defining boundaries, uh, whether we like it or not, the children uh, do have boundaries, just like us adults and parents, no. So, so when you say defining boundaries, we should we we would also teach our our parents that they should also um, have to to respect the dignity of the students no? even if they are young children no so so um, part of the boundary um, education is like for example good touch and bad touch no so so what part of the body of the child is allowed to be touched or not to be touched no especially if the if the adult is not really a family member no of the or of the family no so so this is actually part of the boundary thing. And then, like for example, if the child would ask you, "Mom, can can you can you uh, leave me alone for a moment? I, I would like to, like to talk with my with my with my classmates." That is actually a form of boundary uh, assertion. So how would a, a parent uh, handle this kind of problem? So that is actually another setup. So aside from that, uh, communication boundaries, and then. Um, uh, house management. No, so in in school we have what they call therapy um, classroom management for 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 teachers. But in this case, since they are learning in the house, then we can also include a home management. So we would discuss there about rules and roles. No, for example, definition of role. Um, for example, um, uh, when you say role, 
there is actually what they call ambiguous roles. In, in some setup, in some families, they would ask their their children, twelve years old, to be the to be the the mother or the father of their younger siblings. And is that a problem? It would be a problem because the child is still twelve years old, and he would act like a parent to their to his younger siblings. Then that is actually a role ambiguity. Um, there's some ambiguity of role there, so that's a problem because you are you are um, um, not respecting the developmental um, milieu of the child. And so that's why we need to also to, to teach the parent that these are actually some of the things that we should also discuss. So, so, so parental uh, training, like for example, positive discipline, um, um, or we should, we, we would include there uh, that some of the legal mandates about child abuse so that they would know uh, the boundaries between child discipline and child abuse. So we have many things actually to, to discuss now with, with regards to PET or parent effectiveness training. So yeah, that's why that it's it. now how can the schools now come up with a with a training program for for the parents on, on how to be able to handle this? Because um uh, I think you know, some of the dilemma of the parents also is that they're working and um and um, they might not be able to really give um, the proper amount of time no, to be able to, to guide their children during this um, online learning, distance learning mode. Yeah, that, that's actually a problem. So, so but uh, actually, when, if you're doing this online webinar, then like, for example, now sometimes I, I, I'm i making my project while listening to webinars, that can actually be, be done by some parents. No? So, so it's a good thing actually that we can do this now online, no? Uh, so multitasking actually, no? But there are actually oh. um, some webinars that needs your attention. So, so try to prioritize those, siguro, no? Or kung anong dapat mong pasukin ng mga PET. And then, as I mentioned a while ago in my discussion, so there's a need for no an assessment. So perhaps you can ask the your 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 the the, the parents to to fill up some forms or survey, and uh, so that you would know what. Um, what would be your priority with regards to, you know, to developing their parenting skills? No, so my assessment, parin, para may evidence tayo. Yeah, if and you talked about um, um, earlier, like having boundaries. No, so I I just remember this um, post in maybe it's a meme in in the social media where in the child is in front of the computer doing. Um, his online learning, and then the mom is there on the side with the chinelas on hand. <laughs> yeah, ah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I don't think it's gonna be healthy for the child. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe yeah, uh, it, it's a uh, it's a form of exaggeration, and so <laughs> But it won't be healthy for the child if you're gonna force the child. And nothing for the fact that um, as of this time, we are still on the adjustment phase. So may iba nga mga bata hindi gusto makapag uh, makapag ano online ano yung 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 face nila hindi gusto makita sila sa screen. No? kasi uh, tumataba mm -hmm. daw sila or yung face nila nangingiba na baka baka may bullying mga mangyayari yung mga ganun ba no? So so mayroon talagang adjustment. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, we have here Miss uh, 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 Mr. Romales Comia sharing his thoughts no. So he says here, it is my innermost desire that Dep Ed and Ched can really collaborate with PAP in such a way that we can address the concerns on mental health well-being of students, educators, and other professionals. Actually, yeah. there's an ongoing collaboration between PAP and DepEd. Uh, mm. May mga trainings talaga na ginagawa yung mga kasama ko no? with DepEd and uh, also for CHED. But uh, as you can see, no, uh, let us take our problem in uh, in context, no? Kasi yung iba naman, may iba't iba talagang problema, no? So what we can give, no? For example, ako, psychologist ako, what I can give is the general picture, no? So, so mas maganda, sir, no? Kung, ano, mag-ask mag kayo ng assistance from your local psychologist there, no? Uh, kung uh, anong gagawin nyo sa, ano nyo, sa, sa school nyo, no? Kasi, Yung mga may, may bigay lang namin, like for example, in this kind of webinar, no, it's the general picture and some tips. And, and then, uh, aside from the time constraint, may ano pa, geographical and ano, yung 
uh, presence constraint, no? It's a, it's an online thing. So may mga things na hindi talaga natin address, no? In, uh, in this kind of setup, no? So uh, what I would recommend to you is, you know, to, to invite someone, no? Your local psychologist, local mental health professionals there to help you out with your program. Mm -hmm. Nako, I think um, Miss Juliet's uh, connection really um, is having a problem. Um, she still is not yet on here on board. Yeah. So um, yeah. So uh, and we're if you have any more questions, um, I think we've asked already all the questions here that is posted by our audience. Um, maybe we could um ask for your um, um parting words, uh, Doc Tata. Um, before I'll give my parting words, no. So, um. Actually, my handout, no, I, uh, it's actually a supplemental handout, actually, no? Uh, aside from my slides, no, there's a handout, no? So it's pertinent, actually, for the teachers, no? Uh, yung, mga, yung inclusion, yung dialogue, yung processing. So pwede magamit yun. And then if you have problems, then you can actually call me or um, uh, text me, no, or email me. So saan ko na ilagay itong email? <laughs> Dito na lang siguro uh, sa Q&A person, it, uh, no? Okay, or, or in the chat okay. box, in the public chat box. Yeah. Okay, so ilagay ko na lang po dito yon, Ma'am Reg, no? Kasi hindi ko nalagay sa slide ko yun, eh. Oh. Sige pa, sir. So there, no? Uh, to our audience. Um, One, two, five, two, six, eight, uh, handouts are available already for downloading. So you just go straight to the handout section and download um, the supplement provided for you by Doc Tata. And then we'll wait for the telephone numbers. If you have concerns, you could get in touch with Doc Tata um, anytime. Yeah. Do you have it, sir? So it's a Q&A. Oh, no? There. Uh, okay. So, uh, nandito na po, ma'am. No? So, uh, that's my email, emmanuelhernanitiao.com, and then that's my number. No? So, okay. so, don't you worry. I'll try to find ways to answer your concerns and problems. No? Okay. But that's part of my advocacy, actually. <laughs> oh, very good. Thank you, sir. Nah. So I also copied those uh, um, contact details and posted it in the chat in the chat box so that you could um, yeah. um, go get it and, and um, um, it either email or send the text message to Dr. Tata. Thank you, Pa. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, sir. Maybe you would like to, um, if we don't have any more, wala bang humabol, walang humabol na question. So um, well, uh, since that's the case, yeah, sige po, no? so um, um, my my topic for today is actually more on um mental health, no? So, but I would want to emphasize that mental health actually is um, it's an ambiguous um term actually, no? So, so what what I want to focus is more on relational health no so again let me emphasize that uh, a good way of dealing with our stress our life struggles uh, is on improving our relationship now so at this point in time since we are at home then i think we should focus more on improving our relationship with each other uh, at yung relationship natin to ourselves and to our uh, spiritual higher being no? So yun ang ano natin, no? a way of support natin no? so, yeah, sa ano natin, sa lead natin ngayon at this particular time. No? So yun lang siguro, Ma'am Reg, no? thank you and uh, good morning. Well, thank you, Dr. Tata. Um, and and um, we also would like um, to thank uh, PAP, no? of course, for allowing you to to give this talk to our um, audience and, and um, to PAP as well for the partnership um that the, they have provided us and i'm sure this is not going to be the last collaboration that we're going to have with the Philipp psychological association yeah. of the philippines thank you very much dr tata thank you Paul. thank you okay. yes and to our audience thank you no thank you for joining us this morning um as you as dr. tata had said what is very important is um to foster communication and, and as we foster communication, then the relationship would grow. So that would be communication in all aspects. As he said, communication with a higher being, communication with ourselves as we reflect um, our lives and um, 
respectful communication with people around us. So there, and, and thank you very much again for everybody for joining us today. Don't forget to download the handouts in the, in, in the handout section. And also we'd like to invite you, we're going to have one more Chalk Talk online tomorrow on curriculum development in the new normal. And the topic is implementation and monitoring. That's going to be tomorrow, September 5, Saturday, 10 o'clock in the morning. So be sure to be to attend that Chalk Talk online. And then also um, um, just some reminders. Your certificates will be sent to you in two weeks' time, so do wait for that. Uh, the recording of this session, of today's session, is going to be um, sent to your emails as well within 48 hours. And do accomplish the, the evaluation form that will come out after this webinar. We also would like to thank Ms. Juliet. Um, we're so sorry that the internet connection is not working for her today but thank you very much for staying with us miss juliet from the very start of the this uh, mental health series that we have offered here in chalk talk online so again thank you to miss juliet thank you to the F psychological association of the philippines and everybody have a good day and see you next time bye education through quality textbooks.